the f yeah all right. thank you oh, yeah we just went live you're good oh i'm sorry no you're fine hi mo thank you she brought me a meatball sub oh baby Sounds so i can't fantastic. just gonna have to sit here you're gonna have to get all sloppy on the stream yeah get after it all right we'll wait for some people to roll on in and we'll get started we're back baby on the ground boots on the ground Hard points, back and better than ever. We're missing someone we used to have on here, though, unfortunately. Matt, he's, yeah, uh, he's a he's, he's left, a ghost. He's uh, he's left us. So we should have a rest in peace for Matt. Yeah, we, we should I, have I, a, like, I think a we funeral. Need, we need some F's in chat. Pay respects to yeah. Matt. He's uh gone to the dark side of other esports. So uh, well, I mean, we still like him. Still great friends with the guy, but. Pay some respects to Mr. X in the chat for no more Mr. X hard points. We we should talk about it. Do we want to add a third eventually, or do we want to hash it out 1v1, you and me? I think, um, I, I, think, I, think I think we'll see how people like it first. But Yeah. But yeah, we could I, eventually add someone or rotate guests or something. Yeah, and I, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think we can add guests. We can have player guests. Um, get into the nitty-gritty, the drama, all that sort of stuff. Definitely. It'll be a good one. All right. So, oh, Maven's in here. Oh, Clint's here. We can just add Clint. Oh, yeah. there's Matt. There's right. Matt. Hey, there's Mr. Matt's X. back. Hello. He's in the chat. I'm hammered at the awards party. <laughs> we don't expect, expect anything nothing different. less. Yeah, yep. exactly. He's still supporting, though. I respect it. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, Joe, did you see those speeches? Some of those speeches at the awards? Uh, I just heard about Maniacs. That's the only Dude. one I heard about. <laughs> he's freaking hammered. Trying. Yeah, he's like, "For I love formal." <laughs> I saw, scary. I saw uh, Hitch's tweet that he didn't know he was going to do that. That that he got told he had five minutes before to do that. So wow, maybe he just wasn't prepared. He was already probably ten drinks deep. It was a long day. Yeah. The the jet lag got to it, him. It happens, man. It was just really, really funny. I'm watching in memory. Well, that makes no sense at all. I, but we we love you and it. miss you. I do not understand it. All right, so uh, let's get into it. New year, uh, World War Two. As you guys should see, the background we're not in space. You know, we're we're back we're, on the ground. We're storming Normandy. We're storming Normandy right now. This kind of looks uh, like the but, headquarters a little bit. There's uh, been a lot of things that have gone on. We obviously sucked it up after we started this show just because, well, schedules were busy, the pro league, and really, you know, they, we just sort of, yeah, I would just say we just got lazy. Yeah, we got lazy. I'm uh, not going to, not gonna, you know, sugar it up, but we did get lazy, and the plan is not to get lazy, but there was a ton of roster mania stuff, um, obviously the first 2K, but I, I think we should probably start this off, you know, a preview of this year with, with roster mania. Um, and I think the first team we sort of start off with is optic gaming. Yeah. They're the obviously world champions. You know, we didn't really have a, a recap show after cod champs, but you know, congratulations to them. They finally broke the curse. And, uh, I, I think we expected for that to happen. I mean, I, I just felt like as soon as they got to face envy, uh, and two best of fives, they did it already at stage two. But uh, yeah, congrats to them because we didn't really have an, uh, a podcast after that. But those guys, they're looking really good. And now that we're at back at Boots on the Ground, they obviously win the first 2K. And I just – this team is going to be so hard to stop this year, T. Just, just from playing the game and, and knowing how uh, – you know, obviously I know how Crim and Karma play a lot. This, this is just going to be their bread and butter, man. I, I just – I think they're going to be even better. I think – you know, from what I've watched of Krim playing, he's sort of the been the undersung guy for Optic a lot of the time, or Karma too at times. But man, I feel like Krim's gonna. He already seems like he's the monster on the team, sort of carrying a lot, of, a lot of the load, using a sub, using whatever he really wants, and the pace of the game's gonna fit them even more. I feel like one wave of kills is worth more than ever with how the maps are laid out, especially in Hardpoint. I, I think all the respawns are to be in their favor, and man, it, it's like so. I get almost bored saying the same thing over and over again about them, but with all the roster changes that happened, they're in a better spot than ever. They have the confidence. They finally got that championship, the world championship, and probably the title I would have least expected it from them looking at, back at jetpacks in general. Right. Uh, they're on top of the world in, in every regard and should be. 
And, and I think that's the biggest thing, right? When you sort of look at the past couple of years, you talk about scump, you talk about formal and how consistent they've been. Really, the sort of weaker links, I guess you could say, have been Krim and Karma. If they had a bad event, you saw it. They talked about it. They weren't comfortable in that in, in those games. I think Karma just tweeted about it today. He's like, I never want to go back to Jetpacks ever again. You know, I like boots on the ground is where I'm comfortable. It's where I have fun. And that's the thing now. Krim and Karma, they, their level escalates that much further. Uh, they're incredible on boots on the ground. I remember playing them. It's it's very tough to deal with. And then, you know, if Formal learns to properly anchor, which I'm sure he will, Yeah. Uh, then you obviously have to deal with Chump. So I, I agree with you. I think this team is going to be very difficult to beat. And we already saw yesterday with the first 2K, I believe they went 27-1 and one in map count overall. Yep. Uh, that should be a pretty good sign for any Optic fans out there. Absolute beast. I mean, the thing the sort of upsets with first 2Ks deal with Search, search and Destroy. Yep. And they obviously have only dropped one map, and that's an incredible run. Definitely. And, you know, we'll, we'll touch on this on some of the other rosters as we go through. But it, just from the player perspective, Joe, you know how it was, especially when we were playing at the start of the game you try and are yep. you're trying to learn the maps and the timings of respawns because those are the most crucial most of the time it takes the most practice the problem with that is when you're spending your 80 90 percent of your time on hardpoint right. or gridiron or ctf because we don't know which one of those two are going to make it in either it it, it 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 tends to lead to a lack of search and destroy overall from some of the matches that i were, was able to see on search and destroy it seemed like teams uh it was like a 2-2 split with some of the players where Two of them wanted to play really fast and aggressive and get map control, like middle on London docks, for example, or other crossing into the bomb site, things like that. And the rest of the team would just want to play slow. So I feel like as time goes on, especially as we go in towards Dallas, uh, this reality check's going to set in for these guys. It's like, okay, our search and destroy is crap. We need to figure it out. And that's why so many people get upset early in 2Ks. Yeah, and we'll get to that. I, I think people are already talking about it. Um, but yeah, let's keep moving on with Roster Mania. Yeah. Uh, I think Optic, they're obviously in a very good spot, win the first 2K. The next team I wanted to talk about was our runner-up from COD Champs, and that's Envy. Uh, a lot of changes here. I think we could talk about this forever. Obviously, Cap, John, um, Slasher, they they decided to span. Slasher's the only one that, that sticks together or stays on Envy. He picks up Classic, Hook, and Temp, who... You know, for a while there, there was just a ton of rumors that this was going to happen, and it does. I mean, they are runners up. The year before they win it, are you surprised at all that this team didn't try to stick together? Uh, it just didn't seem like they like each other. But mm -hmm. when you look at the grand, you know, big old picture, I, I feel like it was kind of dumb for them to split up. The fact that you have such a crappy year and don't, didn't have any sort of momentum in IW, and then all of a sudden you're able to mount it together and get those back-to-back -back second places, does it hurt? Yes. Do you lose multiple best of fives to lose championships? Yes, and that sucks. But the fact that you had a crappy year and still somewhat comfortably got to that second place at the end of the biggest tournament where it matters the most, like I don't know. I, I feel like it's really hard to deny that potential that that you know group of four yeah. had. And yeah. The, uh, you know, the the way that they split up was kind of interesting as well. You know, Apathy made it on to a, a team that I wouldn't really expect. Uh, just a weird change overall, talking about Envy. Yeah, I, I think so too. I was really surprised when, obviously, Slasher left the three, but the, the trio didn't stick together. And I was super surprised by that because, yeah. again, their they're placings, you can't deny how successful this team was. They're world champions. And Apathy split, I'm not sure all the stuff that went down. Obviously, John and Cap, they go to Luminosity, but as soon as i see those three sort of go to lg with slack and octane i was just thinking it's kind of weird that why wouldn't those three try to just get octane you know what i mean like yeah. he's that that ar very similar to slasher has that top player potential right and i'm not sure if ap apathy just decided i want to go this way or whatever it was but obviously a huge change so let's talk about the new three you have temp you have hook you have classic classic is uh Sort of the one that sticks out to me. He's been so consistent over the past few years, but really his first year competing that we've played against him, you know, was Ghost. It was his first year boots on the ground. Yeah. And I feel like his his play style and, and sort of his role on this team is gonna decide how successful they are. Yeah. Completely agree with you. It is sort of sort of the same as he was on LG, really. And the I think 
man, uh, can you? I think you can sort of call him a top five player in Black Ops Three and IW. He was fantastic. Yeah. He's able to run any any weapon. He you know sucked sucked it up and ran the E Rad for LG and IW, which didn't really make sense to me. But he was able to basically dominate almost every single tournament, which is fantastic in itself. So it's really tough to to gauge how he is going to do in specific. Going back to Ghosts, I don't think he was very good. It just you know, he was a pro. He he solidified himself in that game as a pro, but he wasn't great at it. Mm-hmm. I think that's changed though. I, I think he has the confidence. He got a he got better teammates over time, and I feel like he will like. I think he knows how to make his team better mm-hmm. now. If that makes sense. No, that, I think that makes perfect sense. Right? He he has all this experience, and it's funny you say like Ghost because I just remember he was like the player who went own eleven. They yeah. won the search and destroy. He always just seems to be that player that. It's just a factor. I mean, even in Ghost, that phase red team, I, what, they got fifth, sixth at champs or yeah. seventh, eighth? Like, he was still placing well. very high. So whatever he does works out extremely well. And then the other side, you have Temp and Hook. Hook obviously making that sort of transfer back from Halo. I think everybody's very happy to see him compete. Envy, you know, they didn't have the best placing yesterday, but it was still a top eight finish. Uh, but one question I kind of had was, if this was a jetpack game, would this probably be the the most the team that has the highest skill ceiling to you? Like, if Ooh. we were back to another IW or Black Ops Three, do you think this is the favorite to win it all? That's so hard. Like, if, if I take Hook and I I just remember what he was able to do from playing against him and watching him in AW. And that mm-hmm. completely translate over to, to like Black Ops 3 and IW, for example, and he's able to continue that continue out that same sort of talent with his movement. I would say 100. percent But yep. Hook, Hook w- would be that factor that gets them, you know, over the hump in that sense to, to beat Optic and be be able to beat Optic consistently. Now going back yep. to AW, you know, this is what this is the team that ha- Slasher has wanted for the past what three years now. Like, uh, it's not surprising. Yeah. He's probably been talking to to Hook and Temp this entire time, and probably Classic as well about what they wanted to do when they were all of age and could form this team again. It's it's quite obvious. That's why he was able to make it happen so quickly. So it's not surprising. He he would have pop off tweets, especially throughout the past couple of years, like, "Oh, I wish I had my other teammates back." Like, it, it, you know, for lack of better words, that's kind of what he was saying in some of his quote unquote cryptic tweets. So. Yep. Not surprising. I think their chemistry is going to be fantastic because it's the team that they've wanted for a long time. The problem that they always had, though, was that they could never beat Optic. No, yeah, and I see the chat sort of blowing up. Like, there's obviously a lot of Green Wall fans. Uh, yes, this this team, you know, this roster, they did lose to to Optic at Worlds, but I felt like Optic they were just so good at AW. Where in Black Ops Three and IW, you you saw obvious holes, and I think who can temp even Classic at that point in their career. They were still super, super young. Yeah. And I think maybe two years experience. If this is like sort of the fourth jetpack game that we're going on to, this is the team I feel like would have the highest skill ceiling. Yeah. And again, last year, if Krim or Karma had a bad event, that was basically it. Krim had an excellent champs. Karma had a great grand finals. And you saw Optic win it all. But I, I felt like if Envy was as consistent as they were in that winner's finals, which we didn't see in the grand finals – I felt like this roster could be that consistent. I definitely could see this team sort of hitting that ceiling and being such a scary team to beat. 100%. I think – I really don't know how they're going to do. They kind of did – I was expecting them to make it to the final with Optic in this first 2K, and the fact that they weren't able to probably, I would assume, pisses them off because they seem like they were yeah. really good in online tournaments and scrims in general. So, uh, man – Boots is, might be a little bit tough for them at the start, but talking about just pure talent-wise and how their chemistry is going to be, they should just be slotted right into the top four with all these different roster changes, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. I, I just think you have to give Hook time to, to adapt. Again, right, he right. just left Halo a month. He's playing a different I game, didn't, yeah. Right, yeah. I, I didn't expect them to sort of come out and win the first two. I would have been super surprised, but I think by Dallas, these guys will be a, a top four potential team. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it for Envy. Uh, moving on, it looks like let's talk about Evil Geniuses. Uh, this will be a fun one to talk about. Yeah. Apathy and Enable join Nameless and Aches. What do you think of this squad the first time you saw this was announced? Fucking wild. <laughs> I, I never thought it would happen. Uh, yeah. You know, speaking to Enable, I just never thought he, he actually has told me that he was never going to team with Pat ever again. That was a quote yes, I, I, was, I, I was. I'm pretty sure I was at that table. He, he, with was, you. he was telling everyone that, right? 
So the yeah. fact that he does team with Pat again is pretty insane. I think I don't think Pat and Apathy ever really had a problem with each other. Like, so I, th- I think that you know them two together will be okay. But really, I, I feel like the personality clash between Enable, Nameless, and Aches, I don't know how that's they're going to function if they keep losing. They This is a team where if they don't place top eight, they're right. all very, very confrontational besides Apathy. And when yeah. one of them thinks something's wrong, they get I swear they like get it stuck in their head whether they're right or wrong, and they're, they become quite stubborn about it. They might be right, but I feel like they just don't come off in the right way in, in arguments a lot of the time. And this is just pure speculation for me from what I've heard from them li- listening to comms on the past couple of years on their separate teams. So I'm just praying that they do well. Because if they don't, this is a team that quite obviously could blow up very, very fast. Yeah, I agree. Um, I thought Champs last year was sort of the deal breaker for teams wanting to play with Pat. E- even in, I mean, EG, they got last. I mean, they literally got 25th through 32nd at Champs. Yeah. Like, they got last in pools. Like, they they lost to Tain and Mines to get third, fourth. So, I, I didn't, I guess I didn't say I, I thought that was it. I thought, like, for two superstars and Enable and Apathy to team with these sort of guys, does that make sense? Like, these uh, just. Again, Ace, he built his Cloud9 team. Yeah. Four champs, they didn't perform. Ant, they sort of built up EG. You know, they dropped study. They didn't perform. I definitely thought that this wouldn't happen. But I think Boots on the Ground was sort of their saving grace, right? Yeah. I, I just think that Apathy and Enable, they have to just think, okay, when was the last time we played Boots on the Ground? Both of these players were amazing at Ghosts. I mean... Ant's been consistent for years and years. Yep. Pat, he's won so many times. This is sort of their last chance to me. Yeah, like that's exactly what I was gonna say. How many last chances do you get? Like, it's just I, the timing. I I think if this was a jetpack game, if the, if there was advanced movement, this team doesn't form. Right. There's no reason for this team to there's, form at all. There's absolutely no way they would try and poach some better talent somewhere else. I think. Uh, I don't know. It's definitely it's a total boots roster. Yeah, I just if so, th- I want to speak on Apathy's situation. He, mm-hmm. for me, you know, Slasher was absolutely fucking amazing the last half of IW, but right. Apathy was sort of the reason that Envy was competitive all of last year. So yeah. his, his stock in, in the community, in my eyes, was so so high. It's mm-hmm. I thought it was so interesting that he chose this roster when I'm sure he could have gotten on basically any other. Besides probably, what, Optic and Envy, right? Because those those were the only two that were, like, really locked down. It, it seemed like anyway. Yeah. So uh, I wonder what his reasoning was I- if he just felt comfortable with these three other guys. But, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, he could have got anywhere. anywhere. I, I will tell you, he, he did text me in the offseason. Okay. And he asked me if he should team with FaZe. And I believe that FaZe team was attached to Zuma and replays. Right. Or if he should team with this team. I told him to team with face. <laughs> yeah, I can't lie to you. Just just based off so, of okay, so that's juicy. sort of the talent. Uh, so that's one one option he definitely had. So yeah. he chose that team, and I can sort of get it where maybe you don't trust replays, whatever. He, you know, he wasn't playing for a year, whatever it is. But I, yeah, I, I agree with you. When you go back and watch IW, even that winners finals where Envy did beat Optic. They it was because of apathy. Apathy yeah. and Slasher had great series, but unfortunately, that was just the best series you got out of apathy. Yeah, um, he didn't show up as well in the finals. Um, so yeah, I I guess the big question for me is is do you think this team sort of has enough star power to to put it together and, and win an event this year? Uh, man, I, I mean, it's totally on Nameless and Aix. I feel like Aix has been below average. Yep. Nameless has been I say Nameless has been about average in, in the Jetpacker games. So if they both of them need to step up to at least a little bit above average. I think Apathy mm-hmm. and Enable have performed fine. Uh Enable struggled sometimes, but I feel like that phase roster has just been a mess for a while now. They didn't really trust each other because they weren't getting the wins. Uh well how how crazy is that is Enable who supposedly really bashed you know, heads with clay. It had to have been right. Yeah, like, cause totally. you've heard zoom and talk about it. I've heard, I, I don't think attach would have chosen to sort of kick off clay. So he gets gunless on his team and he wants to lead that team. They go to champs yeah. and they suck or they don't place where they want to. Yeah. Then he leaves phase uh-huh. in this situation. It's just crazy to me. And now he joins a team where 
he wants I, I guess maybe he just wants to take the back seat because again, a few months ago he wanted to lead the team. He wanted to be the leader. That's why they yeah. didn't play with Clay. Right. And now he joins a team where Pat is obviously an in game leader and is very strongly opinionated when I played with him. Like he he will say what he wants to do, how we think we should be playing, yada yada yada. So I don't know if maybe he was just like, I, I want to take a back seat to this sort of style or, or what it was, but that's crazy to me. Wow. And how bad was that roster change, bro? Getting gunless. Yeah. Like yeah. this is not this is not putting any flack on the gunless. I think he was going into a very weird situation because he sat out in a van. He was trying to get on whatever team possible at that point. He got put into a very tough situation. So I think I don't think it was completely on gunless for him like playing bad, and that's why the roster change didn't work out. But I think the whole like they were going back and forth. Did they want to keep Clay or not? Anyways, they get right. rid of Clay. Probably going to be one of the best boots on the grounds player, you would think, based on history, right? Absolutely. And then, so yeah. they, they <laughs> side with Enable, and then Enable just dips out. Like, how mad do you think phases as an organization? Not even the players, because the players, I'm sure, are happy. They're confident in their new squad or whatever. But, like, man, that, that was just, like, the literal worst series of events possible, really. Yeah, and I, I think really. during the 2K yesterday, I think Clay said that phase asked him to rejoin and he didn't for, so oh for world war ii okay yes well, well, so they definitely <laughs> obviously notified that they messed up and yeah. they went after it but yeah that was the big thing there was enable won that argument but uh yeah i, I think that's it for eg i think yeah. you know we have four veterans they can play very well but i could also see them being in like that five through 12 range we're yeah. just not sure like i could see this team having an event where they've get top three in an event where they get eighth like i just Definitely. think it's gonna be that sort of year for for eg like pat and I'll be, pat should know? be really good at this game like this mm -hmm. is totally his sort of style i i think once once the subs get into a better place with the entire meta i, I pat just i've been saying it for a long time i know jet packing games are completely different in terms of that but pat needs to be a sub player and he needs to be the one going around and helping apathy while letting the other two traditionally a lot slower players do their thing i, I right. think that's the way that this team is going to work the meta right now is a little bit weird because it's so ar heavy so uh, yeah a different story which we'll probably touch on later yeah and I, I mean just right off the start their first test i mean easy they get top 32 um yeah not a good first 2k uh definitely not the position you want to be in for dallas pool play uh so we'll see but moving on uh let's talk about phase because we were just talking about them again uh to me this is probably the most surprising roster, really. Well, besides EG, I guess, um, these roster moves. But Priest and Replays join, you know, uh, Attach and Zuma. Um, and it seems like to me, obviously with all these players maybe not wanting to join, that these guys decided to take the other route, which a lot of, a lot of teams are, which is let's just focus on the team and not the amount of skill on the team. Let's yeah. try to put the put together the best best possible team or team. Let's take a step back because everybody's trying to beat optic. They're trying to beat envy. Now they're trying to beat, you know, EG and E United with all this different talent. And these yeah. guys to me just took a step back and say, let's beat them with our teamwork. That's how we won AW champs and, and all this different stuff. So uh, I think it's really surprising. I'm obviously very excited for reap uh, and Priesta. He showed a lot of talent last year, but this is going to be a, a very interesting team. Definitely the most controversial one when you're talking about roster moves overall. Um, yeah. I'm just going for Priester right away, and this is going to be quite critical. And it might be—I might come off as a bit of a dick, but did Priesta <laughs> did Priesta do enough to really like solidify himself on a top roster? Enough, like enough last year on Cloud Nine. I don't think he he like he was good, but I was expecting him expecting him to be fantastic, and he didn't do it for me. So okay. I feel like it's very surprising that these guys put so much stock in him. Mm -hmm. uh, I know him and replays are, are pretty close friends, so that might have had something to do with it as well. And that's quite important to have that team chemistry and the trust in each yeah. other. If you like playing with each other, it's going to be better, but you got to win at the end of the day. So uh, I just – I don't think they just have it. I, when they are going to have like a, a match on land versus some top-tier competition, are they going to be able to slay with them? Uh, I don't think well, so. Well, that's the thing, right? It just depends, like – because when you talk about Zuma and Attached, you talk about how, the potential they have. And while, yes, we didn't see it consistently, consistently we saw Priesta turn into a beast, yeah. which makes then, you know, Reap's job super important. He has to be the anchor. 
I mean, that's obviously super easy if your three submachine gun and aggressive players are going off. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's going to be tough. It just feels like that sort of swagger and mojo that they used to have. Well, used to have. I mean, we're talking AW now. Yeah. Just just ago. isn't there. Yeah, it's crazy to think that it's been three years, but that dominant, you know, attach and Zuma. It, you just haven't seen that sort of swagger from those guys. Yeah, and it, I, it sucks. I love I love this team. I love all the guys yeah. on it. But, yeah. man, when you just stack up the roster against another on paper, mm. I, man, who I don't know who they're going to, you know, really take down. They they should be a pretty damn good search team. So, that mm. you know, that can get you far in series. It might be sort of a similar situation to, like, the, the old Rise lineup, just trying to get their Game 5 wins in almost every single series. So it's definitely a way to go about it. But yeah, uh, yeah. I it, just don't know. And I feel like Parisa isn't a whole, like the, the worst pickup because I think Attach, like he does sort of play like this slower sort of submachine gun yeah. style that we see very tactical. You know, we'll push up on a position, sit in a corner for a minute. Like he'll let the game come to him at times where Zuma, he'll just go to the game. Like he's yeah. just going. Um, so I think Parisa kind of finds that balance. It'll help sort of Zuma put a lot of pressure on the team. Um, I expect these guys – to make pro league uh but i don't know if this team is you know win an event this year yeah definitely oh total pro league material don't yep. get me wrong but i'm talking about like able to win an event no, i don't think there's a chance at all and then the last point i want to bring up about these guys is before we move on is i, I think they have decent leadership as a whole but who's going to step up and be the guy, like the main guy on that team? You know, before they had Clay and Enable, two of the most outspoken people, especially when it comes to in-game communication. Yeah. Now who's going to be it? Uh, you know, Replays is a fantastic communicator, don't get me wrong. But I, I kind of relate him similar to me. I'm not really like that leader fucking total on vocalist guy that'll take right. over and start shouting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't I don't know in, in, in a tense situation who's going to step up. It could totally prove me wrong, but I think it's a, a thing to, put, to, to to talk about for sure. Yeah, well, we'll see how they develop. Obviously, another disappointing uh, performance. Another team that performed, you know, just didn't do well. I think they got top thirty-two as well yesterday. Um, so those guys in uh, EG, e- even Echo Fox, who we'll touch on soon. But let's get to this team. Uh, the, this next one, obviously, the Rising Stars last year, E United. Um, they pick up Clay and. I tell you what, at the end of last year, I wish that 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 uplink didn't happen because I would have yeah. loved to have seen that E United Optic final, Clay uh, been, even winners oh, final. That would have been wild, bro. But we didn't get that. But I mean, I, I think the big thing is is the twins to me. Uh, can they continue to perform as well and consistently as they did last year? Yeah. Um, I mean, Silly and Clay, they've played boots on the ground before. You know what you need out of Clay. You basically know what you need out of Silly. He's a slower AR player. Yeah. Uh, he's going to get kills. But, you know, the aggressive aggression on that team has to come from the Twins. Definitely. I think Pristini going to have a rough, you know, first couple of months uh, as the meta sets in. Running a sub is very, very difficult right now. And, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> coming, coming off of three jetpack games, you're going to have those fast tendencies where you always want to move forward. You always want to find the next gunfight. You always want to get to your next spot. And it's... I, even in the Jetpacker games, it was kind of tough sometimes for Prasini to slow down and let the game come to him at times. That's when he had those, you know, severely negative games. He's just like, a, he's an all or nothing type of player from what it seems like. That might change in, in a Boots in the Ground title, but he, he, it's going to be tough for him. And then talking about Silly and Boots on the Ground, he didn't do shit in all the years of Boots to Ground before Jetpacks. He didn't. Yeah, no, he, he, didn't. he played. Right. He just was on terrible teams. So he needs to step up and. If if they're gonna be a top team, uh, very yeah, it's, it's kind of like critical, but he no, it's not I, like, I love it's not, it. Yeah, it's not like he wasn't playing then. He he didn't work his way up the pro sort of scene. So will he fall back again? Will he step up to the caliber of his team? I think he'll be fine, but he needs to be careful too because it's not like he did well in the boots titles before. I was gonna I, I was gonna say that when I first remember silly sort of getting better and better placings was AW with that ISO team. Yeah. Um, again before that. I'm not sure if it was him just not taking gaming as seriously, whatever it was. But you're right; he he didn't play well. He didn't have many top placings. It it, it was it wasn't you know sort of his titles. But I feel like his play style plays to it a, a, a bit more. Um, yeah, just because of how slow of a player he is. And then the one player we haven't talked about is Clay. Uh, Clay's back, sort of in his comfort zone. 
he was streaming yesterday. He was playing extremely well. Yeah. Um, it just seems like a lot of the call. It just seems like there's almost too much on Clay right now. In which I mean, he he has to be the playmaker. It seems in Search and Destroy where he's opening up things with with a sniper. He has to make play calls. Then, you know, he he's making a lot of calls mid response where those one on one anchor fights where he has to focus up on. You know, it, it's tough. He's trying to do so much. So, I mean, Clay is going to be obviously a beast this year, but it's going to be interesting to see how this E United team develops. Clay's going to be an absolute monster. For, just from yep. initially watching his stream. I, I don't want to go out and say like this this game's completely like Black Ops 2 hardpoint, but it's somewhat yep. similar. You have to get the waves of pressure out when you're holding the hill. I, it just, uh, from the things, uh, from teaming with Clay back then on boots and how good he was at always being at the right spot at the right time and just the leadership, He just he's the full package when it comes to this team. It's the player that they needed and the fact that they were able to get him for, you know, very easily in the latter stages of IW is fantastic for them. He He's going to... I'm not going to say carry because they're all going to carry their own weight if they're going to make it far into tournaments, but he's going to be the reason, the main reason why they're consistently like top six or whatever they're going to be. All right. I got a question for you. Yeah. Shoot. Do you see this roster sticking together throughout the entire year? Oh, shoot. I like it. No way. I'm not. No, it's changing. Who is it? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) Because I'm gonna, I, I think right away. I think if this team wants to compete with the best players, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be one of those things where Clay's just gonna get just too much on his plate and sort of not deal with it and, and leave. Or do you think they're dropping like like silly? And, and let's let's not let's also talk about an IW between stage one and stage two. The twins almost did split up. Right, like yeah, true. You were hearing the rumors. I was hearing the rumors. The twins did almost split up. So let's not put that like a like a done deal either. Yeah, for sure. I I doubt I doubt they would split up, especially you know since they did stick together through all that, all that BS because they were sort of you know on their first rise to the top. They're solidified you know top pros now. Yep. Okay. Back to the question though. I mean, I think it's pretty simple. Silly's dropped, or Clay leaves. Like yeah. Clay goes to someone better, more well-rounded if they aren't doing well. It, it'll be quite evident whether they're going to be a, a dominant team. I think Dallas will, will be you know, a good indicator of how good they're going to be the whole year. If, they're get, if they get like top four at Dallas, I think they're fine. They'll stick it out for quite a while, and then things might change a little bit later on. If they have a poor Dallas, one of those two things will happen. I think it's, it'll be pretty obvious. Yeah, so and then yesterday they got top 16. They lost a super close series to E6. I, yeah. I don't know if you watched, but they oh, choked both it. hard points. Oh, God, it was heartbreaking, uh, heartbreaking stuff. I wouldn't say they choked both hard points. And they six played extremely well. They yeah. clutched up when they needed to. Um, that game, two that they brought brought back, RCs gets that one before, changes <laughs> the it around. Ninja but, was freaking yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was incredible. Um, but, yeah, mistakes from both sides. But you could see that the E United potential is there. And then, you know, if they win that one, who knows how far that team goes, but still a top 16 finish. Definitely not what you want for your first one of the year. Um, moving on, uh, let's talk about Rise. I, I think this is a team under the radar right now. Again, this is a team that got top four at champs. Um, it's crazy to think about when you look back at their year. They they crazy. win the first event. They win Vegas. After that, all downhill from there until champs where they get top four. They put yeah. up together a, a miraculous run. Uh, but Fisena leaves. Uh, they pick up TJ, who turned 18 last year. Um, so yeah, I, I guess let's let's talk about this team. What, what do you expect from this team? So or this year, I feel I feel bad for Facento. I feel like he, especially at champs, I think he was such a crucial part to them having the composure, especially being the shot caller in S and D for a lot of rounds from them, able to get a top four. I think Rise getting top four at IW champs was all probably almost as impressive as uh, as optic winning it right for the, the yeah. amount of talent that they had i had i didn't think they were gonna i thought i thought they'd probably get round one right away mm. uh, into the bracket and the fact that they were able to go all the way through losers so cool but i feel now, now I, did did Fisano leave or did he get dropped do we I, know i believe he i don't know i thought he got dropped that's, okay that's what i thought i, I might i might be wrong okay but I, so uh, I, that was sort of like i felt like it was kind of his team so I'd yeah. be surprised if he up and left on his own. So between stage one and stage two last year, I know for sure this team wanted to break up. Yeah. Um, 
you know, they were just a mess. They didn't. That's when they lost that crazy series against FaZe and they didn't make it to playoffs. So everybody's saying he got dropped. Okay. Um, so he got dropped. They add TJ. Uh, I think yesterday they end up finishing top eight. Um, I thought it was top four, but they ended up finishing top eight. Uh, but I, I think this is going to be a really strong year. When you look at the core three of these guys, yeah. you know, Looney, Aqua, and Felony, I think that potential is still there. Aqua has been probably the most underrated player the past three to four years when it comes to in terms of slaying. Yeah. I mean, he he always plays super well. He slays super well, and then they pick up TJ. Um, we haven't seen TJ in a couple of years since AW, uh, but this is a player who brings a lot of depth. Um, he can be turned into a superstar. Their search and destroy should be probably the, the best in one the world, the, or yeah. one of the best teams in the world. Pretty damn close. Uh, it should be. So, so we'll see how this team develops. I mean, there's not much more to say than you expect these guys to be in the picture for for a, a long, long time. Oh, definitely. Uh, talking about TJ, he's a beast, man. I, I think he's going to fit into this squad pretty much perfect. The one I want to focus on, though, is I think Fellow needs to, to, to just be better overall. I was critical of him. And, man, I don't want to put too much stock in IW because it was IW and it's just Jetpack. <laughs> it's very inconsistent. Yeah. I'll, I'll just be the one to say it. But yeah, no, of course. I, I expected more out of Fel- Felony at least this last year, and he didn't really impress me too much. I think he'll be fine going in, into boots. Uh, the interesting setup, too, and this sort of relates over to the phase roster as well. The meta is so damn AR heavy, and it's going to be for the near future. Right. Uh, do you think their AR presence is that strong? They're not really, you know, all traditionally AR players. I, it's not that hard to switch weapons on the fly, especially in a game like this. Right. But you know, an AR is a completely different play style. Yeah, I, I mean that's obviously super important. I mean, Looney, Looney's in here in the stream, but I mean he's a very aggressive player. Yeah. The last time we saw him boots on the ground was Ghost, where he was. You know, a, a very solid player. Yeah, yeah. That that's you bring up a really good point. But I I think Yuli will carry a lot of that weight. I, I don't think it'll be hard for these guys right. to sort of. Someone will just have to slow down because when you when yeah. I think of felony, you know, Looney and TJ, I, I think aggression and speed. So one of those three are probably slowing down. Maybe it's TJ. I'm not sure. I haven't been able to watch too much of those guys. Yeah, but, I haven't seen him too much either, but. Um, someone would have to fill in that Faceno spot, and I don't think it'll be Looney. Uh, we saw Felony at time pull out the end before last year, so maybe it's him. Maybe he wanted to be like that slower AR player, but we'll have to yeah. see. I know Looney's in here. Maybe Looney can tell us. But, uh, yeah, I expect these guys to play super well. I, I think they're going to be super consistent throughout the year, sort of that old elevate where they were always in the top three to top four mix. But yeah. we'll see how their their game develops. They should be totally solid. And most importantly, they got a top eight finish in, the, in this 2K as well. They're yeah. in the, the sort of uh, eighth place tier. So really good for them. Good start. Good amount of pro points. And, uh, man, I, I'm kind of excited to see this team pl- play play in general they had a really you know a lot of tough situations last year including that pro league where they weren't able to make it to the playoffs and it's just pretty like heartbreaking stuff so it's a good good way to bounce back pretty much all i got yeah all right uh let's move on let's let's talk about echo fox oh, obviously let's, uh let's uh let's uh we don't have lg we haven't talked about lg we should slot them in like now okay let's do it right now yeah i, let's do it right now. I did completely forget to run a throw about L- lg yeah but anyways lg uh so you have Cap and John from you know our, our runner-up teams of Envy. They joined Slacked and Octane. And Slacked and Octane the past couple of years have been absolute beasts. You talk about John and, and Cap. Cap's always there. He's always in the finals. Yeah, he's um, a beast. John Black Ops 3 I was, you know, obviously caught champs MVP. Last year I felt like he just took a step back. Every event we were talking about, all right, where's Black Ops 3, John? Where's Black Ops 3, John? Uh, he had some solid events. Um, but yeah, I, I actually love this team. Um, I like this team a lot. Uh, again, I thought that Octane was going to join the core three of Envy, but that didn't happen in yeah. a team with Josiah. I'm not sure if you know Octane just really wanted to play with Slack. It, w- it would make sense. Um, but this team, they obviously hit second last night to Optic, and that's probably where I would expect them. I would put them in a top three team right away. Uh, when you talk about boots on the ground and just the talent that this roster has, Cap gets comfortable um, because the past few years, he's sort of been the one that we talk about where he's not performing at the highest level. Yeah. Uh, but before that, 
with boots on the ground, he was an absolute beast. I mean, I teamed with him. You played against him. Yeah. Uh, he had a, a much higher impact. You, you can't deny it that he was a, a lot better of a player. Um, Octane and Slack, I feel like they're just getting better every year. And we saw yep. Octane be the best player in the world for some time last year. Um, and then John. Uh, I, I mean, John's always going to be solid to me. I, I yep. just think he has that raw talent. Definitely. Cap's going to be a beast at this game. And he was... Mm-hmm. I don't. I, I want to use a specific word. Cap wasn't great at the jetpack games. He held his team back a decent amount of times in terms of slaying. I know he's a great yep. leader. Yada yada yada. I think he's going to be like Cap's going to be back on this team. He's going to be in a right. perfect situation to pick up a lot of kills. I've been watching them kind of a lot to be honest. They've been playing like random online tournaments, things like that. They seem to have a, a good grasp before some of the other rosters that have come together. It's not surprising. They're going to be a very smart team, very effective team. I think Cap's going to get them to that top level too. Wouldn't be be surprised if they're consistently in the finals once again. Lots of talent. Uh, Octane, this is his type of game, man. AR heavy. Yep. <laughs> Post up. Uh, you don't got to move. He's got one of the best long-range AR shots. Uh, it's going to be really f- damn hard to kill him in, in I, I just I just think when you look at this roster, like the roles make sense. You have two aggressive players. You then have a filler in, in Cap who's going to sort of teach this team how to play. Is going to teach them, you know, boots on the ground CTF. Who yeah. we all know, Cap has been regarded as the best CTF player in the world for a very long time. Yep. Um, and then Octane. I mean, as long as he anchors correctly, which I'm sure he may have some trouble with at first, but it'll, he'll adapt very quickly. This team is going to be so just tough to beat. If they can get their search and destroy down, that's the only thing I'm worried about. Yeah, definitely. And then the Slacked and John duo in terms of, I mean, they're not really the fastest players, but they're you're, they're good in those close quarter combat. A great duo to have, especially if the meta does ever shift over to like a 2-2 two, two split, two subs, two AR. They're going to be in a really good spot. Well-rounded, great leadership. Their games, you know, their game three is going to be really, really good. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's huge for series overall. Yeah, all right. I mean, LG, looking on the up for those guys. Uh, they had a, a great year last year, you know, winning some events um, in Octane and Slacked. Uh, and then you have, you know, Cap and John, who had two back-to-back second-place finishes. I'm sure they wanted more, but let's talk about this next team. And this is the team that's sort of the leftovers, who who were just put pieces put together, and that's Echo Fox. Uh, you have Fiseno, you have Saints, you have Gunless, you have Assault. To me, the talent is there right away. As soon as you say those names, the talent's there. And Fuseno has to be the leader. I mean, this is sort of Fuseno's time where, okay. Because you remember at Champs, like when you were watching them on the main stage, like you could just tell that Fuseno was in constant communication with his team, yep. especially during S&D. Now, this is his chance to really be a leader. And he has sort of the players around him where if he can get them set up, they're going to be very difficult to beat. But... It's going to be very tough to me to put it all together. I, I just feel like we saw the issues FaZe had last year with Gunless. Saints is always one where you talk about immense skill in, in slang, but at times can be selfish. Yep. And then Assault, where he had a great Black Ops 3. We thought last year he was really going to take off and, and didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but the talent, again, is there. It just has to be put together. It's a weird team. Like a weird group of personalities. Yes. There's no other way to put it. I, you Absolutely. Know, we, we talked about FaZe having probably some of the best chemistry. Probably the opposite on this team, especially when things are going wrong. Uh, Gunless and Saints are going to get really, really quiet. And or, and I guess bitchy is the best adjective when things are going wrong. Yeah. Uh, is Facento going to be able to, uh, I guess, gain the respect of them in a good enough amount of time? On, when Facento was on rise, he was able to be that guy and step up and be the leader and shot caller because he had the respect of his teammates, and that's very important. I don't know if he's going to be able to get that on, on this team right away. Uh, uh-huh. You know, Assault, uh, you know, has some choice words on Twitter at times as well when things aren't going his way. So, very volatile three players that Facento has to try and play with. Uh, mm-hmm. They should be good. Uh, you know, they, it's well rounded. They should have a you know their roles basically set in stone. Yeah, yeah, two just, aggressive subs. It's and just a two weird team, players. Yeah. weird personalities. Uh. Yeah, it's like if if you were to look at back at last year uh, at the end of champs and say, "What are the teams going to be going into World War II?" This would not be a four I would put together. Not at all. This no. very very odd. Uh, but yeah, you're right about assault. He didn't really. I thought he was going to be a breakout, like complete breakout, like almost superstar. Yeah, and it, 
kind of similar to Priesta for me. And it's funny that they're on the same team. It's like, I don't feel like either one of them really played to their full potential because they're really, really good. But there wasn't a lot of times throughout this last year where I was like completely blown away by either way, either one of them. So, yeah, I, I think this is another team where I, I can easily see like, well, not easily. I can see them break into the top four in an event and then the next one completely drop off. Just yeah. super inconsistent based on slang, because that's to me exactly what this team speaks and I just put a lot of pressure on, on Faceno. He's going to have to be the one that brings his team together. Faceno is a guy who the past three years has really sort of brought it together. Before that, I mean, he doesn't have much boots on the ground, like quality experience right. besides being a sub for you guys. Yeah. Like that's literally his boots on the ground resume. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see how they have to put it together. Um, a, a very interesting team. Uh, again, the talents there in Saints and Gunless, so, so, like, all these guys, we could talk all day about it. They've had breakout performances, but it's just if they can put yeah, it together. For sure. Um, up next, I, I think this is a super interesting team. Uh, Enigma 6, uh, General, and really what I call his minions. Uh, yeah. General takes a different sort of route. He drops the core of his team, uh, and he decides to take three young gun players and decimate Bevels and Dashy. Dashi obviously having a breakout year. Decimate and Bevels have been S and D stars for a very long time, and I love this move from him. And uh, I'll tell you why because this is a guy who has struggled just with consistency on his team with skill. Yeah. When we talked about who has to step up for Enigma Six, it's always General. General has to do this. General has to do that. Sometimes you talked about Proto and Royalty, but for the, for the most part, a lot of the weight was on him. Um, and he's deciding to sort of take a step back and he picks up three talented players to where now he has to be that leader. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest when, when this move like initially went down, I thought mm. it was stupid. I thought it was really dumb. <laughs> okay. Like, but then yeah. I let it sit, I let it process. And mm -hmm. the, the reason I say that is I thought losing royalty was horrible. I thought, I think royalty is fantastic. I, I okay. think he brings a lot to a team in terms of pure slang you, you just need it. So that's why I originally I was like, oh, that was dumb. But okay. watching them play yesterday, it seems like he, he's in that, you know, sort of leadership control position that General likes to be in. He, he wants to be the, you know, it's such like a meme, but the general of the team. And he was totally able to do that. Dashy had a breakout year the last year. He was able to last out three months. Yeah, you know, last I think three he months. turned eighteen or something. Then he like he, he barely had any for time. Chance. Yeah, he had yep. barely had any time to impress people, and he's able to do it. So Dashy's going to be fantastic. Uh, again, the search and destroy stars on one team. Their search should be one of the best out of these teams. Uh, they, I mean, it's looking like they're going to make pro league. This is it's only based on one two K, but the fact they were able to get top, top four, four yeah. top four is huge at this you know sort of point in the game early on. So. They looked really good yesterday. They had multiple clutch wins. I think the biggest one they had was over, uh, I think it was Haggy's team. I think they're able to win like a really close series there. And then they're oh, able the to United. And yeah. the United. The United. Yep. Right. So huge wins. Uh, I'll, I'd be surprised if they get another top four this next weekend, to be quite honest. But I I don't really have a problem slotting him in, into that like that top eight, eight sort of range. Yeah. I, I, again, I, I I love the risk that General's taking. Um I, I don't see why he wouldn't take this risk. You know, E6, even in AW, they were known for just like their teamwork and how this team chemistry was. Like even last year when we, when we talked about their uplink, when they had M. Ruiz, it was ridiculous. But it didn't get them anywhere because in the tough matches, people sucked. It's just what it is. The players, they didn't step up. They didn't slay. Because when you're not slaying, you're not allowing your teamwork to even show. So he's taking this other route, which is I'm going to pick up three skilled players and hopefully we put it together. And so far, so good for these guys. Totally. Um, these next couple of teams, guys, we'll just sort of run through them. We can go deeper uh, yeah. on some. But uh, those are really the big you know, changes in North America. Uh, Ghost Gaming, we didn't touch on. You know, Yesterday, I believe they had a top eight finish. So they're still looking really solid. This is a team who... At times last year, it looked great. And then they choked that that lead in stage two. <laughs> uh, that'll always haunt them. Yes, yeah, so we'll get to EU. And, or we'll get to EU. We're just going to quickly go through North America. And yes to everybody in the chat. I, we see that Proofy is a free agent. We can touch on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any any thoughts for you on, on, on uh, Ghost? 
Ghost should, should be one of the most well prepared. They obviously are in a, a, a very good team house environment. They should be, you know, able to study up on opponents. They seem to have the best preparation, which is, you know, very important at this stage in Call of Duty. I think it'll be just fine. Uh, very solid top eight position for them in the pro points uh, in, in the 2K. So that's really good for them. Yeah. Um, Lacefield is gonna needs to be like a star again though mm-hmm. spacely i think is gonna be just fine he's gonna be doing his role getting that you know two minutes per per hard point map he's gonna be doing just fine uh, i feel like this game might be a little bit tough on lacefield's play style in p- specific he was so good because he was so damn aggressive where you're gonna have to be able to slow it down at times in this game so i feel like the other two uh, are gonna be just fine mox is probably gonna be one of the top anchors this year he's been yeah, doing great. He, seems, last year. he seems to be on top of it too like with the slower sort of play style so lacefield llama need to be you know are the are the two wild card wild cards yeah i I definitely agree with you um and then we have the new team caliber uh accuracy chino theory and kenny another roster i just didn't see happening i thought like the old tk was gonna come back it's boots on the ground but theory just takes a different route uh they keep accuracy and then they go after chino and kenny uh kenny he had some top placings in a w i think he then went to play halo um and then now he's back somewhere to hook. And these guys yesterday with a top four finish um, did not expect that at all. I, I don't know if you did, but I'm super happy for Theory because I felt like similar to sort of Aches and, and Nameless and all these sort of boots on the ground guys. Like this was sort of his last chance to yeah. really put a, a, a contender team together. And it's damn impressive, man. Yeah. Well, you talk about those other guys, the guys you just named. They've had much better quality of teammates on average over the past couple of years. Theory yep. hasn't really had that. He's had to build up from the damn ashes, basically. And yeah. the fact he was finally able to scrape back in and get a top four, I'm really happy for him, to be honest. The fact that you know this roster was able to get a top four with how competitive everything is now, didn't expect it, but they were looking damn good. Accuracy was pl- slaying quite well consistently. Chino's been a beast for a long time, so it's not surprising that he's gonna, he, he's been consistent for a while now. And then Kenny, man, I, I, he's a freaking beast. Yeah, I, I think the big thing to me is I think uh, Boots on the Ground just plays accuracy's game a lot more. He's always been a slow AR. I think he's going to have a much higher impact in, in World War II. Um, Chino, I'll never forget it. Stage one of Black Ops 3, Chino and Diabolic, they should have been on a – they should have left that team, that DT team. Yeah. Um, I think that was their opportunity to sort of climb the ropes. They didn't, and – Last year they just had a very poor year, uh, but I'm happy to see Chino here. I think he's a he's a great kid, puts a lot of work and effort. Yeah. Kenny, I don't know well, but I remember watching him in AW. He was a beast. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm excited to see how these guys play. Um, next team we're going to talk about is like the Canada New York team is what they call themselves, but it's Proto Exotic Gunjar Royalty. Your boy Royalty's here. He's stuck or he's sticking with Proto. And then Gunjar and Exotic. Uh, Exotic, we've seen some glimpses of, you know, he's very consistent at times. Gunjar, another one. Man, if Gunjar can put together a big year, this this team is going to be very difficult yeah. to play against because the slaying power on this team could be very high. I, I, I'm i like a little bit of a fanboy of this team. I, yeah. I love watching Goon and Royalty play. I feel like they have just like a such a unique style to their gameplay overall. I think these guys could be really, really good, like breaking into top six good, like consistently, if, if they okay. can really put it together. The two yeah. things I do want to touch on, and I've been I've been quite critical of Proto, and I've talked to him here and there via Twitter and things like that of what like things that he's done wrong before, and he just needs to not make bonehead plays. He needs to just do his thing, be the sort of OBJ guy, and I think he'll be just fine. Just not trying to do too much is my point. And then going yeah. over to Exotic, really a wild card for me. Again, going back, that whole Cloud9 was roster last year was so damn weird. Exotic was on that one. And now I just, I don't really know how good he is. I'll be honest. I, I, I'm probably undervaluing him. I'm sure he's going to be, you know, just fine. But I don't know if he's going to be above average. And that might be me just not really knowing enough about him as a player, to be quite honest. Okay. But uh, he didn't, I, I guess I don't know enough about him. What, what are your thoughts on him? I, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Yeah. I Again, I just remember watching last year, and there was glimpses of basically greatness. Like I, I thought he was a great addition to a team. Uh, Cloud9, again, they just didn't perform. He doesn't get into stage one. 
you know, with that TGC team. So, oh man, it, it's just tough. We'll, we'll see how this team sort of pans out. But again, I love Royal Team Junjar. I agree. I, I think this team really just depends on Proto and Exotic and how they play. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Um, and then the last, well, we can talk about next threat as well because it seems a lot of people want us to talk about Proofy being a free agent. <laughs> but uh, we can talk about this other sort of leftover team, I feel like. Uh, it's to be determined what their organization will be, but it's BL Fire, Nagaf, and Study and Methods. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about this team, and they I, I, I don't want to say they were – they had connection issues last night uh, in the 2K, and that's why they weren't able to get as far as they probably hoped. Um, I believe they ended up getting top 16, so it wasn't bad for them. Uh, but study boots on the ground, methods, BL fires back, he returns. He's been a great anchor, you know, Black Ops 2. He, he had yeah. a great year. And then Nagafin. Uh, Nagafin is a big question mark for me. Yep. Uh, we'll see how he plays, but I, I'm really excited to see study in, in methods and BL fire on, on boots on the ground. Yeah, we could talk about Parasite's team too, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Don't worry. I a lot bet, of teams. Man, I... I Man, every single broadcast, I swear, I always just pick on Nagafen. But he, I feel like he has it, you know? He, like, he has that unique sort of style to his gameplay. He does some fancy stuff sometimes. I feel like he is good enough. But when it comes down to it, his stats aren't good enough, like, almost every event. And, and yeah. that sucks. I feel like he does have the potential overall. Maybe he needs to play a little bit more selfish. I really don't know what it is. And I think that's why it makes me so mad and why I pick on him so much. He just can't seem to be consistent enough when it comes to slaying. And that's really his only problem. Great at search. Great sniper. One of the best snipers we have in CWL, in my opinion. Uh, I think, well, I, I don't, I think what consistent. I've watched is Studies actually sniping, which I'm excited yeah, about. That's probably better. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Uh, and Studies remember sniper on boots. Yeah, he was insane. Like, And nuts. I've seen some clips already where he's just you know, doing study things. Uh, yeah. But from what I've seen from these guys is they have the fire. I mean, I trust their tweets. They've said they haven't got off the aim. They've been grinding so much yeah. every day. Well, and uh, uh, yesterday was just so unfortunate. I was actually watching the series that they're trying to play. BL fire is just getting hit off. And, you know, you, you, we've all had that happen. It's such a vibe kill, especially when yeah, you're, absolutely. you're in the midst. You've been playing for, what, 10-plus hours, sitting in your damn chair. And then all of a sudden you get hit off. It's like, uh, uh it's just unfortunate. They just learn how to get a VPN or something at that point. I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, Study's playing aggressive sub. I think he'll be solid. BL Fire in, in that anchor role. This team, to me, a lot of pressure on Nagafin and Methods. Obviously, Methods, just with the age thing. I mean, he was, you know, during Ghost, when he was on that phase red team, he was on the up and up. And then the age limit thing came in. And since then, he hasn't been able to get back into that top 8, top 12 sort of situation that he was in. And uh, I think this is just his opportunity to to prove himself once and for all. Yeah, I think Methods ha ha another player that has the, you know has it in him to get some top placings, but his placings over his career have been kind of bad. Let, let's just yep. be honest about it. He hasn't really been able to consistently break into the top tier, and that's the good thing. The transition over from jetpacks to boots, he you know he was very solid in Black Ops Two, always on pretty pretty good lineups overall, getting yep. some solid finishes. So they could could be okay i just I, I they haven't been super consistent and it's so it's just so tough because i'm trying to compare it i've only seen a lot of these guys on jetpacks so mm -hmm. all right well all right well we're gonna talk about team what is it called haggy team 100 all right so we're 100? gonna talk about them right. uh so parasite embos pharaoh and i'm blanking out blastful duh idiot all right yeah. i watched this team yesterday obviously chris yep. was streaming um and it was damn impressive to watch. I think Parasite's back. He wants the free gas. He's getting it. Uh, he made some incredible plays yesterday. Um, I love him taking the risk on Pharaoh and Blastful. Yeah. Uh, I think those guys have infinite potential. Same thing with what, what General's doing. They're taking S&D stars and, and just really seeing those young guns play. Um, this team, to me, it's on Embos. Uh, I, yep. I just think if, if Embos can play well, and we saw him play well yesterday. You, you can see how far this team can go. Bose is a great player when he's in his groove. It's just when he's like bouncing from roster to roster, he, he can find a lot of issues. He has those certain games in respawn where he doesn't get a lot of kills. He needs to try and limit those as much as possible. Haggy, though, he's going to make sure that they don't make a damn mistake. He, he's going to be a dick about it, and he's going to cause a lot of arguments because he doesn't know how to word things appropriately or in a nice tone. It's been like <laughs> this the, the entire time. 
I know yeah. I've known Haggy. I've known Haggy for right. a long time. He just comes off as a dick, and you either deal yep. with it or you don't. It's sort of right. it's kind of similar to how Krim is too. Like if you make a mistake, he's gonna keep harping on it until it's fixed. It's simple as right. that. Talking about Pharaoh and Blast, Blast. I think I think that dude's gonna be fucking good, man. I think he has it. <laughs> I, th- I think he has it. Yeah, I do too. I, and what I saw yesterday as well as Pharaoh uh, was playing well. I, I believe Pharaohs they're trying to get Pharaoh to use an SMG um, at time to time. I, I saw Chris sort of gas him up when he dropped like 38 kills. Uh, so I, I just I like those two young guns. Um, it's on the vets. I, I think you know what you're going to get. Parasite. Uh, again, if this team doesn't implode, and they almost did the night before the 2K or two yeah. nights before the 2K. But like, it seems oh, like I'm not teaming with them after the two. Oh, oh, wait, yeah. we did pretty good at the two K. I guess we'll keep it. I guess we'll keep it going. It's like, oh my gosh, I, so it much seems drama. like it seems like for 18 year old kids, Pharaoh and Blast for all are much more mature than you would have thought. And I think that just comes from the S and D experience. They've won tournaments. Uh, they they do have experience, not land, um, but it's there. They've been in big moments, uh, and you can see that maturity sort of come through. So, you know. Hopefully they stick together. Uh, I, I want here. them to. I think they're going to be really yeah. good. Yeah, I'm top eight yesterday. They put themselves in a great position. Anyways, um, back, so yeah, back to Haggy. I I love how he's anchoring so far. I feel like he's playing at, at such a good pace to make the game really easy on the rest of his teammates. I don't think that his teammates know some of the rotations on Hardpoint as fast as possible yet, but I think he's kind of like whipping them into shape. It's like you have to be very, very consistent in hardpoint, and Haggy brings that to a team. Agreed. All right. Now they want us to talk about ERA. You want to talk about ERA or next threat or both? Oh. Phew. We're an hour in already. We, we can, can talk. T- let's t- touch, touch on it. We'll touch on All right. Um, so let's let's talk about ERA. Uh, ERA, I believe, is Dito. Fears just got dropped, correct? Yes, correct. Havoc and rallied. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I watched yesterday, uh, Dito is taking a much of a leadership role. Um, Havoc, again, I- I've been critical on him. I know you have. I-, I just don't know what to expect. The consistency has to be there, and he has the skill to do it. Yeah. He just hasn't shown it yet. Um, rallied. I haven't seen much of him play besides S and D, but yesterday he seemed to be playing pretty darn well. He seems like a good communicator. He's understanding a lot of the different situations. Again, this is his first year playing variant. Yeah, uh, I believe, unless I'm just talking out of my ass, but I, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, this team has potential. I mean, I, I don't really know what else to say besides that. If, if Dito can play well, yeah, definitely. From the the little that I've seen from them, I've been watching their streams a decent amount. Uh, Rallied's a really good teammate. Great communication overall. He gets yep. very frustrated in, in hardpoint, especially. He gets like caught and gets you know uh, gets joked a few times, or things just aren't really going his way. And it seems like it's kind of a snowball where he starts to get quiet. He starts not really complaining, but it, it kind of kills the vibe a little bit. That's what I've seen. So he he just needs to to be a little bit more consistent overall. Uh, he's just learning respawn, I think. So it's going to take a little bit of time. And then havoc. I've been uh, I've been critical of him. He tries to be a superstar a lot of the time, it seems like, and just try and make do too much. And especially with that faster playstyle, it's not going to pay off as much in this game. So I just feel like, I mean, obviously they already got rid of, of a player, so it wasn't going as well as they had wanted it to. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting I mean, to see. Top 32 they, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, that's, you put yourself in a very tough spot. Um, and there's a, there's just so much competition. We've already talked for an hour, and people are still telling us to talk about other teams in the chat. Yeah. Uh, Next threat we can touch on. Um, I don't expect much from this team, honestly. They did uh, horrible. Mirror. I, I mean, I feel like this is a great proof game. Mirror. I, we've talked about Mirror for so many years after Black Ops Two, and you teamed with him in AW, and he showed some some great, you know, play there. But yeah, he just hasn't been that guy. Um, Ricky. Ricky has some great placings over the past few years. I'm just not sure. I just, I just don't think this team has has it, man. It's just what it is. And obviously, Proof believes that, or, or they believe Proof doesn't have it. I'm not sure if Proof left or Proof got dropped, but there, it's already a mess. Absolute mess overall. And, man, I, I feel like Mir should just be in a, such a better spot in our community for how good he is. I, I just don't, I don't know what's wrong. I feel like he has some of the 
he was a great teammate when I teamed with him. He seemed to be, you know, sort of that total package, a very aggressive player. He seems to be nasty. It just can't seem to get good placings, get on better teams. It just seems like a mess. Uh, then moving on to Ricky, I think Ricky's going to be really good at this game overall. Uh, this should yeah, be his no, sort of, of course, style. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he just needs to get on a better roster overall. I didn't really have high hopes for this next threat thing. It just seems like it's. It, I'm. Do you want to be mean, Joe? Go I, for I it. feel like this is just a scheme so Doug can post more YouTube videos. I love it and make a shit ton more money because that's what Doug does. But supposedly Doug's also paying them. Salary. Okay. Okay, that makes it a little bit different then. But um, still. So he's obviously – listen, I, I love Doug. I love his ambition. Um, Doug could – I mean, I feel like Doug's going to be better on boots on the ground than advanced movement and jetpack games. Uh, Doug's a guy that won't stop. He won't stop playing. Uh, I just don't – I don't see him getting to like the pro league, for example. It just – if he maybe would have started competing like last year, maybe. But I, I think they're just too far behind. Yeah, same. It's just going to be really – Really tough to bounce back. Are there are there any other teams you want to talk about? Uh, last on one to... I think people wanted us to talk about was Pure, and Pure is Sharp, Stainville, Neslo, and Wheats. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Sharp and Neslo, if you look at Boots on the Ground, they've played very well in Ghosts and Blyhops too. Stainville, absolute legend. He's returning. Um, Wheats has been around for a very long time. I just, again, another team that I just... Uh, I want to pull pull through for them, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I feel like it's just it's like nostalgia, and I want yeah. them to be good because right, they were because exactly. they were good. I just don't know, it, man. When you when you take that much time off, it's just really really hard to get back into it. It's more competitive than ever. I just don't I don't really see them finding a way to find like a pro league spot, for example. I yep. I, I agree. Sucks, with you. It I, sucks I, to I, say it, but you got to be realistic. Yeah, again, I would love to have high hopes for them, um, but I just don't right now. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's it for North America. Woo! Let's. Uh, you want to take a commercial before we get into the other comments? Because I got to pee. Yeah, commercial break. All right, so let's run a commercial break. Make sure to use code TP for five percent off your scuff controller, and I'll be right back. Hey, perfect. Quick ad break, my friends. I'll do a little Q and A while Joey D's taking a little tinkle. As we move on to the European land. Oh, I see a lot of spam about a certain player in the chat. All right, well, we could probably touch on this when, when Mr. DeLuca gets back. We'll, we'll touch on it, my friend. I, I Okay, I see it. I understand. I understand what you guys want to talk, want us to talk about. All right, cool. All right, let me uh, let me go through this 2K placing list to see how everything uh, see how everything ended up. I can't tell what was chat want to talk about. <laughs> I think we got some Sloss fans in the chat. Holy crap, you guys are savages. All right, so what did Sloss's team get in the 2K? Top 32. So he's lumped in with, like, EG, Echo Fox, FaZe Clan. Era. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't really watch too much of them, to be honest. T talk about the war. <laughs> Real World War II. Bruh. Put me on the spot now. You guys are savages. Anyways, chat. How you guys are? How are you guys in, uh, enjoying the 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 show so far? I know you guys are really happy to have it back. Uh, I'm gonna get some more production value as time goes on. Uh, we got a bunch of different content ideas when things are stale, like in between events and things like that. So should be should be going well. But hopefully, you guys are enjoying it. Joey D. They want us to talk about Sloss's team like really bad. They're, All right, Sloss's team. They're freaking out. Couldn't even tell you the roster. Oh, that's disrespect. It is Sloss. I, I'm not. Um, it is Sloss. I'm not trying to. Sloss, Moach, Sender, Swarly. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, don't have many deep thoughts. Uh, Moach, I feel like he can 
be a great player. Uh, he's shown the, the the talent before. Um, who was the fourth? Swarley killing. Who's the fourth? Sender. Sender. Uh, it's going to be tough for these guys, man. This is like another team where it's like you're pulling for them, but I, I just don't think they have it. Uh, I don't really know what else to say. I, I've seen some streams. Um, I've seen Sloss obviously seems comfortable. I think he's going to enjoy this team a lot. Yeah. That he's talked about that, how this is so close to Black Ops 2. So he'll be super, super comfortable. But as a team, I just think they, they lack some skill. It screams average, unfortunately. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's just being realistic. I think the level of competition is way hard, higher. And just to like put it in perspective, I think like even if I came back and had like, uh, like, uh, trying to scramble together a roster in the situation, it's just really hard to break back in to like get a pro league spot. So it's like it's not surprising you're gonna start out at this sort of average level. It's just it's it's a very tough situation when it comes to. And, pro and we've already talked about like sixteen teams before these guys. Like, yeah. You know, we we didn't even touch in that. Like, you know, this team Zodiac, Baker, Brett Jump, Knox, and Zach Goddard got top eight yesterday in 2K. So there's teams in, that are mid-tier who they're breaking through. Like, the, it's it's tough to just come back and say, all right, this is my year. Yeah. This is my year, baby. I'm back. Like, boots on like, the ground. Like, like, like everyone else is not like, playing. <laughs> here we go. So, like, I, all these old school guys, like, I, I love it, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, not at all. Should we move on to EU now? <sighs> yes. Um, Europe. I don't uh, – I have a pro points list here yep. that I can go well. through. Um, so I, I guess the first one is, is Splice. Um, they drop zero. They pick up Tommy. I love – I I don't love the move. I, I loved zero as a player last year. But yeah. you were at the events, the pro league they the chemistry just wasn't there after they win stage one yeah they have a horrible stage two week they i think they still get through the playoffs like luckily uh by like beating red reserve twice but uh you could just tell that team was breaking apart tommy um this is his chance man yep. last year he did have he had a horrible year i mean that's let's just be honest like by yep. three had a great year last year was horrible um, and even even individually, you can't just blame it on the team. I thought Scraps and Wooskins were better than him individually. Yep. Um, Sonny B, I think, was the worst player on that Fnatic roster. But you didn't see much out of Tommy. Um, and he gets – I mean, that's like if you just came back, Tyler, and Krim and Pat and Karma were just like, hey, let's play. Get yeah, the, you'd get be the like, band yes. back together. Sign I'm me like, up. Yeah, Give me a jersey. It, dude. Like, Send me yeah. the contract. Like that's yeah. It's the dream. It's totally yeah, the like, dream. This dude just got on the best European team while having having an, an average year. Like this yeah. dude, was just like thank you. Uh, but boots on the ground, Tommy has always been, you know, very solid. Yeah. Uh, when you think of Tommy, you think of boots on the ground. So, I mean, they win the two K yesterday. Uh, they they should be the best team in Europe. I mean, Mad Cat and Jerd. It's. I think this is similar to Crim and Karma. Yeah. Like, Totally. It's the, this is their home. Like they they feel good playing. You hear them like hype each other up. Like this is going to be very difficult. And for man, anyone to be, it's the same sort of thing. Like a roster. Like granted, they made a roster change, but the gap I feel like is going to be so wide with the number one and everyone else in pretty much every region. It's usually how it works. But man, uh, how how do you look at this roster on boots? They have the most experience on boots. They they should be mopping people. No problem. They, I mean, they win the 2K, so that's obviously they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. But yep. I, I just don't see them being stopped. Back to the zero topic. Mm -hmm. Such a dramatic drop-off as well. Ke obvious chemistry issues, but the guy went from – he could do no wrong. MVP, just dominant. Like, <laughs> Literally oh, dominating. Like, <laughs> almost breaking KD records for – People are calling events. him the best player in the world. Like, <laughs> like, And then, like I swear, what, a month, month and a half goes by, and he – he was still above average, really good player, but he went from tippy top to uh, he, he slid way down the mountain and didn't have yep. any sort of similar yeah, he performances went skiing. after that. Yeah. So it's not surprising. Uh, I guess the outlier of this team is Bance, but I, Bance is going to be fine. He's very skillful, right? Yeah. I mean, when it comes to bits on the ground, I don't, I, I personally don't know of his experience. I'm sure, I'm sure he has some. Uh, but the past few years, he's been an absolute superstar. Uh, I'm sure he'll be just fine. Um, I, I love this team a lot. I can't wait to see what Mad Cattinger do throughout the year. This is a contender for w the best team in the world, right? Like, I don't, 
I yeah. don't see how it's not with how no, Splice played last year. Uh, so we'll just see. You know, when Dallas comes around, again, I just don't want Europe to have a slow start to the year. Yeah. Does that make sense? And then them just blaming on the fact that, oh, uh, well, we're not playing against Americans. Like, all right, I get that. But last year, like, you were beating them. So yeah, right. I want them to have a good start to the year so we don't, don't have to worry about Europe. I don't want them to having to keep proving themselves over right. and over again. Yes. But, but when you have a really good year and then if you have a shit year to follow, it's like, okay, you just assume that good year was a was a one-off. It was, you know, it was just a Jet Packer game or whatever. There's all of the excuses right. in the book. So I, I'm on the same page as you. I want them to solidify themselves and get that damn respect that, that they should get. Agreed. Uh, Red Reserve, Josh, Joe, Rated, and Zero. Obviously, Josh, Joe, and Rated, they were your Black Ops 3 runners-up alongside Vance. They pick up Zero. Uh, They hit second place yesterday. Again, um, to me personally, this whole team depends on Joe to me in in his performance. I've said that with with his teams in the past. He can just be super inconsistent at times. Uh, But Josh obviously has the leadership rated in Zero. They're both slower AR players. Yeah. Um, actually, and Black Ops 3 Zero played pretty quick with a submachine gun. But, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I like this team. They're obviously, I think, clear number two in EU. Solid roster, pretty much overall. Uh, Joe had a really, had a really bad year, but I'm not going to hold it against him. I, I think he's going to be just fine. He has boost on the ground experience, but he, he just, he, he, I don't think he liked IW, man. It was, a, I agree, yeah. it was a rough one for him. Like, like the pro leagues and stuff. Like we 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 ripped on him a decent amount, but well, we ripped just, on him because he literally had the worst stats in, yeah. out of all the players. Like right. there was, it was yeah. bad. As simple as that. I think I think he's gonna bounce back though. Yep. Um, Team Moose, the twins, Moose and Shawnee. I loved Shawnee last year since Vegas. Uh, he's a beast. He was my favorite, Dude, like breakout. You were, you were a player. Shawnee fan the whole yes. year. Like he, yep. you Vegas stayed on, the, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I was so mad when Elevate dropped him. They had potential. That was Elevate's best event. Huge Shawnee fan. I love the Twins. Can Moose put it together? Because the last boot, the last boots on the ground game was Ghost, and that's when Moose was sort of the star, right? He was yeah. the star, one of the stars of the European scene. I remember because you know we had the NVTCM land, and all these people hyped up Moose. And I can't lie, like they were just better than us at that land. Thank the Lord, I somehow got second. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. Uh, but yeah, I, I think this is a team uh, has a lot of potential. I think Shawnee's obviously going to be that slow AR player. Uh, the Twins last year had a breakout year. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of this team. Definitely, and it's not like Moose had a bad year this last year. He was fucking dominant. Yeah, no other way yeah, to put true. it. He was That's sort of stuck. On, he was sort of stuck on these like middle, uh, the middle tier of the rosters in EU, and he, he couldn't really find a slot to you know work his way up to get into the like one of the top two or top three teams. But he's still individually great stats, consistent performances throughout the year. It's just kind of unfortunate that his team just had had that dramatic drop off in, in the stages. Yeah, I, I I almost remember like the rumor that like Fnatic was going to pay up moves for Sunny B, but some contract issues happened. Uh, so it did almost happen. So. Obviously, Moose had interest in playing with the Twins. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this. Obviously, the Twins, best people to follow on Twitter. Make sure you do. Uh, they're a great time. But, I mean, these guys, can they put it together? Last year, it was like Scraps was taking over Respawns. Wooshins was taking over Search and Destroy. Yeah. If they can both keep developing at the rate that they were, this could be a very tough team to beat. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, Wait, who is Epsilon's fourth? Who is uh, that? Insan- insanitized. Who is that? I I don't know. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Hello, Epsilon. Chat, chat. Who's this guy? I've never. Uh, I have no I idea. I think there are some European guys in here. I think I saw Scraps. I think Josh was in here. So maybe they can give us some intel. Is he like an up and comer? Is he? Does he have like experience? Someone, don't know. Someone to fill me in. I I literally have no idea. About this guy. <laughs> EU Crip Six. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. And the, okay. fact, the fact that he's playing with, you know, Dave Vortex oh, and Hawk, he's like, cool. wow, I mean, he's got to be good. Oh, so he's an 18 guy. Okay. Just turned 18. Okay, so uh, let's just talk about the core three. I mean, Vortex, Hawk, and, or Hockey, and Dave. Uh, they had ups and downs last year with Josh. Um, I think we thought they were going to be better than what they were. Um, at times, they were great. Um, anytime we talked about Breakout Hardpoint, we talked about Epsilon. Yeah. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, 
But this team has a talent. Obviously, Dave, we talk about one of the best players in Europe for the past couple of years. Vortex I, in hockey. They can slay. Vortex yeah. has been – literally last year, like if Vortex had a good series, they won. Totally. But mm-hmm. they, a, he a, didn't. Sometimes he didn't, and it was really yeah. bad. Anyways, Dave, uh, I think Dave was the best European player last year. Okay. For, for the whole year. Dude was nuts. Every mm-hmm. single map, I swear I watched him. He was just making plays – always positive like I, I feel like his consistency just outdid everyone else on the eu teams yeah I, I it's hard to disagree that with that um in sanitize so they picked up an 18 year old i'm a big fan of it because i don't think there's below like below the teams we talked about like there's a few other teams like uh, i think we could talk about millennium um renegades Besides that, and those two teams didn't place well yesterday in the two K, anyways. But besides that, there isn't, there hasn't been much UK new talent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we don't talk about those new guys. Even some of these other teams, they went back to old school players like Yunchi and Jake. Right. Those guys are back in the mix of things. So they're taking a risk on an eighteen year old. I mean, I, I hope it goes well. You know, I'm a huge fan of taking a risk on young talent, which is what we talked about already today. Definitely. Wait, what's Swanee doing? Was, I don't know. He... I don't. I don't know if he's playing. Oh, I thought he was playing. I want to see Swan. He's my favorite. Me too. I would love to have seen Swan on a, on a team. Um, Damn. I'm, I'm sure these guys know. I'm sure he's had team offers uh, again. Not too sure. Um, we had some pretty crazy upsets. Uh, had some, I, I don't even know. You, you see Maxi in, in the French in the top eight. Yeah. Um, DZ resurges. Oh, that's a Marcot. I watched him yesterday. This dude was hilarious. Like, <laughs> like he was taking, he was smoking cigarettes mid hardpoint. Uh, it was <laughs> a great thing to watch. Uh, they got destroyed by Splice, but that that did happen. Um, infused Niall Zerg Nolson and Zed. I think this is a, a pretty solid lineup. Um, but again, still below those like top three uh, UK teams. What about Shane? Where's Shane? Uh, I'm trying to, look, I'm trying to look them on these rosters. Well, he obviously didn't play too well yesterday. Yeah, I don't see him. <laughs> so, uh, I think the only two other teams that are typically on our radar is Renegades. That's Reedy, Sunny B, Watson, and Jake. Yeah. Um, they did not play well at all yesterday. Um, Reedy and Watson, they were obviously on that Elevate team. We didn't have high hopes for Sunny B. Everybody thought he was the worst player on Fnatic. Yeah. Um, and then they pick up Jake, who he had some top placings in Boots on the Ground games. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I expect these guys to be like potentially top five, top six in EU, but that is a very rough start. Yeah, not not a good momentum builder for sure. And then the last team I guess to talk about is uh, Marky B's team. Marky B's in here, Millennium. Yeah. Uh, Gunchy, Marky B, PD, Urban. Horrible placing, but I 100% expect these guys to be in the mix. Um, oh, they totally should. On a game like this? Yeah. Uh, they pick up Urban. Uh, Mark UB and PD stick together. They pick up Urban. Uh, I like that pickup. I thought Urban was a was a breakout star, honestly, last year. Yeah. I thought he played really well last year. We got um, a, they, we had Marky in the chat, right? Marky, how's uh, how's Gunch coming along? How's he yeah, bouncing back? Uh, hopefully you're still in the chat or else it's going to be awkward. We we'll just have to move on. But I'm interested to see how, like, it's got to be, t- like, taking a long break and hopping back in. I think it would take me at least a few months to, like, really – get back right. into the mindset you know you could you could play good and everything because that i feel like that'll never un, uh, never leave you but it's like the mindset needs to be there he said Gun she's unreal. unreal let me ask him all right all right marky then what what the hell happened yesterday yeah he's well, obviously not off to a great start um let me let me hear the excuse marky what but happened anyways <laughs> i expect these guys to play well they should be in the mix of things probably just an off day yeah we're looking good yesterday was just an absolute nightmare all right. Well, um, happens. Oh, there's Shane's team. Shane's team's right there. Excel. They got 24th. Oh, okay. Um, Desire quicker. Sh- okay. Quicker Shane. Yeah. They, there's decent. a chance. Decent. Yeah, decent. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I, I think when you talk about boots on the ground, I think there's always like a French team who's sort of in there. Yeah. Um, you can see that that brotherhood got top eight. Maxi, um, supremacy and vitality. They put together the rosters. They got into the top 16. So I mean, the French are back. Uh, I see Spain twice, um, movie star riders and giants, and then a, a few German teams. So uh, Europe getting a little diverse out there. Yeah, I like it. 
Um, I guess we could briefly touch on APAC. Oh, uh, Mind Freak 1, shocker. It's like nothing ever changed. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have too much to really discuss about APAC. Uh, yeah, I expect me, me Mind, Freak, Mind Freak to get through, no problem. I couldn't even tell you the, the team roster changes. Um, I expect Excites teams to do well. I believe they got second. I, I watched that game five because I had to wake up uh, for work. I watched that game five. It was pretty intense, but Mind Freak uh, ended up prevailing. Um, and I, I believe there's like two other teams that are typically in the mix, like Tana Mines and then, or yeah, Tana Mines and then whatever, whatever that other team was. That's a close region, typically. Yep. You, uh, na- you nailed it, Joe. Per- perfect. Nailed it. All, All right. right. I think I think we covered everything we wanted to cover. Yeah. We're going to do it Monday, 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. This is going to be our normal time for the show. Okay? We're going to do this. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to try and work in some giveaways, some, some interaction. Maybe we'll work into some polls to see what you guys have to think about some of the different topics we're talking about. But that's coming later on. I yeah. think just to close this one, because we've been we're at an hour, 25 minutes, let's do like a 5 to 10 minute Q&A. We'll knock yep. off some of your guys' questions in the chat, and this will be like our, our normal thing now that uh, World War II is up and running. So Yeah, and, and you know, if, if you're tuning in and you work for a company who, who just loves Teep and Merck, you'll see all that advertising space all over this stream. We just love that. So get in contact with us. Yes. But yes, Q&A. Five to ten minutes. Uh, ask some questions. We'll pick them out and, and answer them for you guys. Thank you all for tuning in. This yeah, has been a, a great, you Dude, know, first first show. It's good to be back. It's good yeah, to be back. And oh yeah, we'll, we'll get some. We'll we'll get some guests as well. Definitely guests for for some of the future shows. Uh, we'll we'll get some better graphics and everything. So we're not just ran. I'm literally just pick pictures from uh, Google, and we're on the we're basically on Normandy right now. So we'll we'll get things rolling a little bit better. But yeah. Let's of course, we questions. have to sell out, guys. Come on. Totally. This uh, will be on YouTube, both of our YouTube channels. TP yeah, Cod and what's yours, Joe? Uh, I think it's just or Handsome Merc. Yep, Handsome, Handsome Merc. Merc. It'll be on both of our channels. All right. Mark, you asked some guests. Sure, Mark, we can do some guests. I think we just want to get to do the weeks flowing a little bit. Yeah. And then we can definitely get some guests in. Who's better, Team Hunter or FaZe right now? Honestly, from what I've seen, I haven't watched a lot of FaZe. Me neither. Um, I'd probably say Team Hunter right now. I mean, they obviously just did better. I watched. I was able to watch more gameplay. They seemed consistent. Um, let's see. Why no return, Teep? Uh, I, I'll give you my reason. Okay. My reason being is, I, to me, listen, jetpacks scare the hell out of me. Yeah. I have no idea what the next three years are going to look like, but yeah. I'll tell you what. If, if it was boots on the ground for the next t- five years or even three years, I probably would have came back. Yeah. But. I, I totally agree with you. But I cannot. Not. Like, I don't want to give up my whole situation that I have going. I'm building experience on a completely different thing. It, like, being a player is like a one-track sort of road. And you, you go down it, you do good, that's awesome. If you don't, well, you got to stop and you do something else. So, it's just scary. If I could guarantee the games were like this, exactly what Joe said. I probably would have hopped on board. This is totally my type of style of game. I could be like passive aggressive with a sub. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I was actually fielding some team offers b- before I was making my decision. I was talking to some people on some, you know, decent enough teams. Was thinking about putting some to- something together because the game was awesome and I knew I was going to love it. Ended up yeah. deciding against it because I-, I feel like it was the smarter decision long term to stay on the broadcast. I feel like. I'm having fun, and most of all, I love working with you know all the guys that do the broadcast as well. So, mm-hmm. um, let's see, who's the Optics X Factor? That's easy. It's Karma. There's no question about it. Well, Karma and Krim. Well, the past few years, that's been the X Factor because if they played well, they won. Um, it could change this year because I think they're going to be super consistent. Yeah, like that for us. As far as we know, Formal might be like one of the worst players that needs to be the X Factor, or whatever. But you just don't know until like an event comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Any others? Any others? Which players would you put together to beat OG? I mean, you could debate this one all day. Not sure now. Uh, with Boots on the ground, we'll have to see who plays well. Yeah, I'll probably be able to answer that question maybe like after Dallas. Might maybe even longer after that stuff. What do you think on Era's roster change? I Have they got someone yet? If they don't have a fourth, I can't comment. 
it would have to be I, I see a lot of people probably guessing it's proof that would make sense right yeah i mean yeah that's true but they would have someone they would have they had to have someone in your mind yeah opinions on the maps um hmm. Obviously, some spawns need tweaking, specifically on, on CTF for Gridiron, whatever is going to come out of that. It seems like CTF is going to be is like a more consistent game type. This is purely from my perspective of what I've played. I love the hard point rotations. My problem with a lot of the maps is... So, I feel like they, the, the layout of the map is perfect, but then when they create a choke point, it's this big. It's, for, it's tiny. Like, if they yeah. could just like double the size of all the chokes on every single map, I feel like it would just lead to a lot more fluid gameplay. Like like on London Docks, for example, instead of making fire to, to brew that little, little, like, doorway, double that. It, it's just, like, things like that that bother me. But the game's a lot of fun. I can't stop playing it. I've played more of this COD than... Uh, i played a lot of COD lately. It's fun. Yeah. Um, in terms of maps for me, I, I think the, the toughest thing right now, uh, from what I've watched and what I've played, is probably Search and Destroy. I think a lot of the maps are just... You know, they're, they're smaller size maps. So s and I think, is in a tough spot. I think London Docks uh, is a good s and map. Uh, St. Marie Dumont, I know, is one that people just don't like that B site. Yeah. Uh, Gibraltar is just sort of a mid-fest. Uh, USS Texas, I, I totally get it with the sight lines. Um, so there's definitely there's definitely some that I, I just think besides that, I, I think the game's in a, in a great place. Um I love watching it. Like last night, I was going crazy watching the 2K. I love playing it. I've played a ton of it. Um, so, so yeah, I, I'm excited for the year. And then last last question, I believe, was I saw Josh's, so I want to answer it. Okay. Yeah, he, he asked, do you actually reckon EU teams will keep up again or will we fall off again? I think the top three EU teams are in a great spot. Yep. Uh, Red Reserve, um, Splice, and then I, I like the Scraps and Moose team. Um, and, and Scraps just DM me. He's like, you better watch out, Joe. That's all I say. So <laughs> I love that. I love that fire. Yeah. Um, the rest of the pack, we'll see. But I have a lot of expectations, especially for Splice and Red Reserve. Again, I'd love to see them just right off the bat be in the top eight so we don't even have to have this conversation. But yeah, I, I think it's a damn good show, number one. We yeah. hit about 90 minutes. Yep. Perfect. Had a great time. It's good Ooh, to be back, Joe. We did There's it. a lot to talk about. We're back. We did it. Next Monday, we'll be back again. Yeah. Thank you all so much for tuning in. There's 1,500 of you for the most most part. So uh, thank you guys so much for, for supporting the show. It's good to be back. Appreciate all you guys. We're going to try and make this as consistent as possible. I think we both are a lot more passionate about this Call of Duty than the last. Yeah. So I think we're going to have a lot more to talk, talk about with concerning the maps how they're playing out we can go over you know gameplay maybe go over some nostalgic stuff going back to old boots games of why we think of certain things about certain players uh we'll get the production value up a little bit more like i said just more interaction possibly some giveaways just make it more worth your guys's time overall all right adios appreciate you guys hanging out gonna run a few ads and we'll see you guys next monday 8 p.m eastern thanks yes if you miss some of it we'll put it on youtube Matt says he has the overlays. There we go. We'll have a cooler over- overlay next week. Sweet. Thanks, all Matt. All in the Discord. Appreciate it. All right, ad time. Love you all. We'll see you guys next week. Whew. Ad time. Ad time. All right, Teep. All right. Good stuff, brother. Very good. Very good. We all, let's, uh, we'll just use the same doc and then populate it with all the new stuff yeah we're talk about yeah any if you think of anything or, or see anything just throw it on there we can talk about it sounds good man later guys later bro. later bro. let's find someone to host let's find someone to host let's find someone to host we'll host patty p Patty P doing? Hell, we'll host Patrick Price. Okay. See you guys. Thanks for chilling. We'll see you guys next Monday. I'll be streaming again tomorrow. Uh, wagers with uh, like Jack and Benson and stuff. You guys want to tune into that. But overall, hard points next week. Thanks, guys. Peace out. Enjoy Pat's stream. <laughs>